My partner, the father of my child, does not identify as Christian, but it is still the most spiritually edifying relationship of my entire life. As a Christian, it was crucially important for me to find somebody that honored my faith and my Christianity. But if you think a non-Christian can't do that for you, you are wrong, because mine certainly does. Hi beautiful people. First of all, I want to say yes, I've seen Mr. Atheist's response to my Mrs. Midwest video. But instead of making another video response, I invited Jimmy, Mr. Atheist, to come have a conversation with me on the God is Grey channel. So next Monday, stay tuned for a stimulating chat between me and Mr. Atheist on the subject. The Monday after that, I will be sharing my entire pregnancy journey with you guys. I'm going on 37 weeks, due December 15th, and it's getting very very exciting. I want to get real with the God is Great community and tell you what it feels like to physically be pregnant, what my body has gone through, as well as what I've been through emotionally, how difficult and blissful and everything in between it's been for me and my partner, how crazy it was to lose my job and navigate how I'm going to bring a child into the world without expecting that gift from God so soon. And that video will come out the week that I am due. So maybe that That'll be the last time I speak to you guys before I have a baby on my chest. I've also mentioned to you all before that YouTube demonetizes a lot of the videos that I make, so it is actually just impossible for me to make a sustainable income off of YouTube. I always made these videos from my heart. My intention was never make money. However, now that there are almost 75,000 people in the God is Grey community, I just always have ideas swirling through my head, books that I want to write and output to you guys meetups that I want to have both locally and all over the country, potentially all over the world, a sexual integrity curriculum that I would love to create and ultimately bring to all of you in all of your different cities and hometowns and wherever you happen to be. So that said, Patreon, again, is such a game changer for me. If you can afford one to five dollars a month, whatever, it actually builds up very quickly and is very beneficial for me just focusing on this channel. And you know what? If you can't afford that, I am honestly just glad you're here. Please keep subscribing, tell your friends to subscribe. I can't wait to hit the 75,000 mark and then of course the 100k mark. Now we are addressing the question I receive more than any other question and that is, I am a Christian. Am I allowed to date or marry a non-Christian? If you're familiar with this channel, you will not be surprised that I don't have the typical Christian answer to this, which is no, you can never date a non-Christian. I actually disagree with this. I believe that we can ultimately date and marry non-Christians. And I know the first attack of this will be, Brenda, you're going off your feelings. You are simply disregarding the Bible and its teachings because you want to date whoever you want to date. But no, my reasons are not that simple, and there are three of them. Number one, and this will be the most important point to a lot of Christians, is that the classic teaching in evangelicalism that Paul supposedly said Christians cannot date non-Christians is actually not biblically sound. We are going to dive into this. Number two, I do not believe that just because someone is a devoted attendee of church that that automatically qualifies them or that's the one and only qualifier of someone that you will be evenly yoked with. And number three, I really want to explain to you guys how you can invite a spiritually edifying person into your life and how you yourself can and should be a spiritually edifying partner. So number one, when a pastor or leader tells you that the Apostle Paul explicitly forbade us from dating or marrying non-believers, they're actually taking liberties with scripture that had nothing to do with marriage. There are a handful of verses like this, verses that pastors pluck out of context and build entire sermons around. Song of Solomon 8.4 is an example of this. Do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. This verse is cherry-picked from the Bible to tell Christians that self-pleasure is a sin. Yet, if you dive into the entire book, The Song of Solomon, and see the context, you realize that not only is that verse not about self-pleasure, but also that the entire book is actually an ancient erotic novel. We're dealing with a similar issue here. 2 Corinthians 6.14, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. This was a warning against idolatry and false teachers, not a warning against marrying non-Christians. In an effort to not bore the disinterested, I'll link a few articles below 
that explain the true context and meaning behind this verse. In short, the Apostle Paul's heart and ministry was called into question among the Corinthians and he was defending himself. He pointed out that their specific congregation was still worshipping idols and being led by non-Christian principles. Also, in other verses, he does not condemn marriage between Christians and non-Christians. You'll see all of these points in these articles. The most telling article I'll link below is from Focus on the Family. Even this incredibly strict fundamentalist organization is willing to admit this verse has nothing to do with marriage. So you know I'm telling the truth. Though, of course, in this article, they immediately go back to wrongfully associate the text with marriage. Number two, I do not believe a person's devotion to church is the one qualifying factor that makes them marriage material. This will be short because I only have a couple thoughts on this. Nowadays, especially, there are a lot of wonderful spiritual people who love Jesus that are just in the process of navigating a lot of complicated emotions. A lot of us have been burnt by the church and by organized religion, so you may encounter a love interest that says, I'm not exactly sure where I stand on church, or I'm not exactly sure if I can call myself a Christian anymore. Personally, I am more aligned with anyone that is just being honest about their journey with faith. Whether they are devoted to church or they are struggling and trying to figure out where they stand, that kind of honesty and truth is what is really aligned with me and my values versus someone who continues to go to church just to keep up with appearances. Honesty and being able to show your vulnerability to someone is really the foundation of a good relationship. That said, if you yourself are a pastor or a minister or someone that is just deeply devoted to church, that may be a value that is very important to you. But this brings us to number three, which is the truth that there are many factors that make us compatible or not compatible with a partner. Being raised in evangelical youth group, it was kind of like, hey, we're all Christians here, so these are all safe people. Everyone in this room is marriage material. This is not true. So lastly, let's dive into the four ways that you can invite spiritually edifying people into your life and how you can be a spiritually edifying person. And this portion goes out to even non-Christians who just happen to be in love with a Christian. Number one, be willing to challenge and uplift one another. When you hear unevenly yoked, you may not be familiar with the origin of that term. A yoke is a wooden bar that joins two oxen to each other and to the burden that they pull. A quote, unequally yoked team has one stronger ox and one weaker, or one taller and one shorter. Weaker or shorter ox would walk more slowly than the taller one, causing a load to go in circles. When oxen are unequally yoked, they cannot perform the tasks set before them. Instead of working together, they are at odds with one another. And this is a beautiful way of looking at our most important relationships. Are you both moving in the same direction? Are you both willing to push, move, and grow forward? Can you compensate or take over where your partner is weaker and vice versa? Can you strengthen and encourage one another in those areas of weakness? Biblically, we'd call this ironing sharpening iron, and that is exactly what my partner and I do for one another. Number two, do not allow your religions or lack thereof to harm or diminish one another. My partner, the father of my child, does not identify as Christian, but it is still the most spiritually edifying relationship of my entire life. As a Christian, it was crucially important for me to find somebody that honored my faith and my Christianity. But if you think a non-Christian can't do that for you, you are wrong, because mine certainly does. One of the main reasons our relationship works is, although we don't agree on everything, we see life through the same lens. We are utterly aligned in our principles, and we share the same goals, both long-term and short term. When I'm struggling, even with my own faith or fear, he's there to uplift me and remind me what I believe in. And I also believe the Holy Spirit gives us confirmation of these things. Many of you have written me and asked me this unequally yoked question, and I have said, listen, the Holy Spirit is within you. You are capable of looking heavenward and figuring this out for yourself. For me, a major moment in my confirmation of this relationship is that the idea for God is gray came to me when I was with this person. We were just chilling, drinking wine in my living room, and suddenly I opened my computer, typed like 40 or 50 different subjects that I thought I would like to say if I had my own YouTube, and when I snapped out of it and looked what I had written, 
my partner, who was just a friend at the time, said, you just went in a trance. Where did you go? And I told him, I think I have an idea. And ever since, God whispered this beautiful God is great concept to me and encouraged me on that path. This person has been my number one supporter and advocate of it as well. His own issues with organized religion do not impede upon my ability to practice my faith, to believe in my own spirituality, to honor Jesus as I want to on my own. Lastly, I'd like to say that your partner cannot be your everything anyway. This this is why your life is supposed to stay rich and big. Because if I need to have a conversation specifically about Jesus and my Christianity, I have a friend circle, I have my family that I can talk to about that. Which brings us to number three, which is that we should make sure we are choosing a partner that can meet our core values, the things that are most important to us, and that we can do the same for them. So they are not meeting every single one of your needs, but they are giving you what you need in a romantic relationship. And I've said this before, I'll say it a million more times, none of us fit into the perfect Christian bubble because we are all so unique. And last but certainly not least, number four, consider true compatibility. I know I'm always going hard on Paul and Morgan, but I really don't like their oversimplified version of physical intimacy. What if you're not sexually compatible? You have the rest of your life to figure it out because you can become sexually compatible. No, compatibility is not something that's guaranteed to develop over time. I'm going to tell you about a book that is not a Christian book, but I really do hope that you will all stay open to resources that are outside of the Christian self-help book section. The reason is because people have been studying marriage and intimacy and relationships both scientifically and sociologically forever. Even as a Christian, taking a studied scientific approach to marriage, relationship, and intimacy can actually edify your life, regardless of the author's religious affiliation. Shan Booty, for example, is a YouTuber, author, and intimacy expert who's written a book called The Game of Desire. We actually did a collab but lost the footage, so I'm hoping our schedules align again for a reshoot. The entire book may not resonate or be beneficial for you, in your opinion, but but there is one chapter I'd like to focus on because it is universal. It's chapter three, how do you like your love? Even when 10 of us fall under the umbrella of Christian, there will still be so many unique characteristics, desires, traits about us that make our compatibility styles different. So on the subject of romantic compatibility, Shan discusses turn on triggers, which identify one of five things that get somebody hot and bothered. Love languages, one of five expressions of love that we need from our partner. Kinsey's scale, one of six sexual preferences, apology language, one of three ways we move past resentment and the mistakes in our relationships, attachment style, how we're most comfortable in a relationship from securely attached to fearfully avoidant, and lastly the big five personality traits to identify who you and your partner are as you move through the world. I strongly believe each one of these elements should be considered when you're choosing a partner or someone to be marriage material. They're really beneficial for figuring out what you and your partner need and how you can align yourselves to have a better relationship or if you just need to break up. So in short, this is how I view unequally yoked relationships. I honor God through my relationship by staying true to my faith, by surrounding myself with people that share the same faith, by openly expressing myself to my partner, by never compartmentalizing my spirituality, my intimacy, my relationship, my friendships, by keeping my life a holistic experience, and by continuing to be honest and sincere about who I believe God made me to be, and telling my partner how he can uplift me in that. And we can certainly dive into this issue more because the God is Great community asks this question a lot, so I want to hear from you. I would love to hear your perspective on relationships and whether or not you gleaned anything from my personal experience and values when it comes to choosing a partner. And that's it. Please like, subscribe, let's hit 70 or 100k. Donate to my Patreon or Venmo if you can. I love you guys. God bless.